Um, good evening. Um, we, I will call to order this meeting of the City of Montpelier Development Review Board. Thanks for being here. It is Monday, August 16th, and um, I will begin by introducing myself and the members of the board. Um, my name is Kate McCarthy. Um, can you hear me all right? Okay, thank you. Um, I'm the chair of the board, and I am joined by three other board members. They are Joe Kiernan. Hello. Rob Goodwin. Hello. And Michael Lazarczyk. Good evening. And we are staffed by Meredith Crandall to my right. Hello. Very good, thank you. So the first thing we'll do since we are in this hybrid mode that's relatively new is we will review the remote meeting procedures and process. And that is something I will turn to Meredith for. All right, so for everybody, logging in from Zoom. And by the way, I'm sorry, you can see me twice on your screen now. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen. This is mostly for people watching via Orca, um, but it helps. Okay. Oof, okay, there we go. Screen share at the beginning. All right. So um, for those viewing this meeting via Orca Media, you can participate in tonight's development review board meeting via the Zoom platform, this link here, um, or you can call in and use this meeting ID and that'll let you participate as well. We just won't be able to see you. Um, if anyone has problems accessing the meeting, please email me at this email address, mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. For those attending via Zoom, turning your video on is optional. For everyone attending, please keep your microphone on mute when you are not speaking to reduce the background noise. Um, we don't have anybody on via phone tonight, so I'm not gonna worry about that right now. Um, please use the Zoom chat function only for troubleshooting or logistics questions. If you have a question or comment, a comment about an item on the agenda, please raise your hand, either physically or by using the raise hand button on your toolbar. Um, and then uh, wait and to, to speak until the chair has recognized you. Once the chair has recognized someone to participate, please make sure to provide your full name and address for the record. We ask that anyone commenting on an application aim to keep their initial comments to two minutes. Um, the chair may grant additional time for speakers who have follow-up questions or comments. In the event the public is unable to access this meeting, um, and I would get notice of that probably via an, an email, the meeting will have to be continued to a time and place certain. And then I'll hand the meeting back over to the chair. Great, thank you, Meredith. Um, the next item on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. So is there a motion to approve the agenda as printed? So moved. Motion by Joe, is there a second? A second. A second from Michael, thank you. Um, because we're in this hybrid format, I will call the roll to keep everything on record. Um, all those in favor of approving the agenda as printed, uh, Michael? Yes. Rob? Yes. Joe? Yes. And I also vote yes, thank you. Um, the next item on the agenda is comments from the chair. Um, I just wanna say this is our second in-person kind of meeting. <laughs> Um, so I really want to thank everybody for being nimble and being open to changing guidance and the uncertainty that comes with it, particularly staff who are helping us today. Everybody is making the time to attend and um, folks who are willing to mask up as we all adjust. Thank you. All right. The next item on the agenda is the minutes of July 6, 2021. And we do not have in attendance enough of the people who are at that meeting, at this meeting, to vote on it. So we will defer the minutes of July 6th until our next meeting. Okay. So, um, Meredith, could you remind me what we do when the screen goes blue? Uh, yeah, the, the just, uh, it just resets. Okay. Um, and of, no, nobody from Zoom, you guys didn't see anything. It's just our big display screen up here. Sometimes time's out, okay. it gets hot or something. Yeah, fair enough, it's August. All right, so um, the first item on our agenda is um, 83 Terrace Street, a conditional use review of the construction of a 20 by 20 foot, 20 foot by 20 foot accessory building 
with a, um, as originally proposed with a bathroom to be used as a home industry. So um, what I'm going to do just, um, first I'll just let you know kind of how the flow goes for all of this. So we'll swear in anybody who wishes to be heard and those folks may be present or on Zoom. We will get an overview of the project from Meredith. We'll get an overview of the project from the applicant. And then we'll walk through the staff report, um, which Meredith has provided and focus on those items where we need a little more information or where uh, board members may have questions. And there will also be an opportunity for neighbors to be heard or, or interested parties to be heard. Um, this is a conditional use review. And that means that a use may, I'm kind of like making eye contact with the screen. I know that's not the right thing to do, but um, those are uses that may be allowed in certain areas, a zoning district, but are different enough from what typically happens in that zoning district that there's an extra level of review by a panel, the development review board, to make sure the criteria are met. So um, to do that, we'll look at a set of general standards, which apply to all development. And then we'll look at a set of conditional use review standards, which apply to, apply to conditional uses. So with that, um, if the applicant would like to come to the to the table, I'll swear you in. Just right here. Yep. Great. And um, if anybody on Zoom is interested in being heard, speaking to the application, if you could um, raise your right hand, I'll swear you in. Karen, I don't know. You're just here to listen. But... Yeah. So, Karen, if you can, you can. Yeah, just raise your right hand. And if you can unmute, that would be great, but it's not absolutely necessary because yeah. we can no. see you. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> awesome, thank you. So if you'd please raise your right hand. Um, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury? Yeah, I do. Very good, thank you all. All right, so I'll turn to Meredith for an overview of the project. Okay, so. Kate already sort of summarized it a little bit. Um, and so I'm gonna hit just some of the highlights of things that maybe we're gonna to wanna to focus on. Um, so the applicant is, as Kate said, um, proposing to build a new accessory structure. And that structure is going to be used to house a chiropractic business. Um, it's, we aren't really looking at the, the way that business is classified in our regs other than for like parking needs and other things like that, because it is being conducted on the same parcel as the applicant's home. So we really focus on the home office, home business, home industry section, which says that um, this is therefore qualified, you know, counted as a conditional use in this zoning district, um, no matter what the table of uses would otherwise say. And there, there are some questions um, that need to be looked at with regard to, you know, I have a question here about the uses, but it's really for the board to just walk through that. That's one reason that's in red um, is to make sure you guys walk through that reasoning clearly. Um, and then there's some questions about the erosion control plan and stormwater management that we're really more about working out the details of a project like this um, and getting DPW input. And we've gotten some more input from the applicant on that. So when it's timely, we'll be able to pull that forward. Um, I wasn't sure how many of you were here. So I will probably uh, email that to Rob and Joe and Michael in just a minute. So you guys have it. Um, and we, you know, we got input from DPW. So we'll be talking about that. And then it's really gonna be the board needing to go through those conditional use standards. Um, that's gonna be the, the heavy lift. Um, you know, there's, there's a little bit of discussion about parking spaces, but again, that's, I, I don't think those are big issues. It's really gonna be the conditional use standards and making sure that the board feels, examines whether or not there are any other conditions that need to be placed on this um, proposal to have it actually fit in with the neighborhood. Okay, thank you. All right, so we'll turn to you and um, whoever's going to speak, if you could first introduce yourself and then and then um, go right ahead. Okay, sure. So um, I'm Jay and this is the proposal. So 
I'm not exactly sure because I haven't done this before. Everyone received the materials. Should I go through everything I wrote? Oh, that, that's a good question. Thank you. Um, I should have said that. Um, we did receive the materials. So we've seen your summary of responses to the conditional use criteria. And then in the staff report, we have Meredith's preliminary assessment of how those fit. So you don't need to go through each each and every one of those. But if there's anything that you want to add that you think is important for us to know um, over and above what Meredith said or to emphasize anything that she said, um, you can I'm let us know that. that. OK. Um, I actually think the report in the emails is fairly complete. So my proposal is to operate my chiropractic business from my home. It would be seeing between seven and nine people a day, four days a week. Um, between the hours of eight in the morning and six in the evening. Um, it's a very quiet business. So I think it is in character with the neighborhood as far as, um, you know, someone would arrive at my home, come into the accessory building, and we'd just be in there together for 45 minutes, quiet conversation, um, no extra lighting, nothing like that. Um, the building, there have been a couple of changes. Um, I, I found out that I'm able to put a bathroom in my basement that can be accessed from the driveway. Mm -hmm. So I'm removing the piece about bringing water and sewer lines to the accessory building. Mm -hmm. We would only bring power there. And because a bathroom's not needed there, also I was uh, reduced the size. Okay. So instead of 20 by 20, it'll be 16 by 20. And that's reflected in the drainage sketches. Um, would you guys like me to talk about the drainage? Sure, yeah, since yeah. that was one of the highlighted issues yeah. and they're looking for a little more information, I'd love to hear more about that. Yep. I think Meredith has just sent those sketches to the to the board members who are remote. But yeah. yeah, so those sketches show where there's gutters along the roof lines and leaders coming down, and then that all drain into a pipe to go down um, at the base of my yard into daylight. Mm -hmm. And one of the comments from DPW was to have a dry well there. Mm -hmm. So we'll put about eight cubic feet of um, clean cut stone where that drain comes out ultimately, um, probably about, it's about 30 feet from the building okay. um, at the end of my property. Mm -hmm. Let's see, and then, so drainage, the erosion plan considered was asking about the silt fence during construction mm -hmm. and so, um, Department of Public Works clarified that we put that on the downside of construction. Mm -hmm. So Meredith had said there's some topographical maps, but essentially I believe it's two sides of the project mm -hmm. would have the silt fence to control for erosion during the project. Okay. Yeah, is there any, you know, I'm happy to respond. I'm not sure how much else there is beyond what's been submitted in print. Um, those, those are some of the key issues that were outstanding. Maybe what I'll do at this point is um, pause and turn to my board, mem my, my, my board member team and ask, um, are there any questions from board members about anything we've discussed so far? So that's a no from Joe. I did send you the emails, but I can also pull things up and share them on the, um, Zoom screen if somebody needs me to. Would that be helpful, Rob? No, you found it. Okay. Well, um, board members, I'll trust you to please pipe up. If don't, there's, don't forget your microphone. There's the microphone. <laughs> it's not over there where, the, where the, some of the people are. Um, yeah, I just think members, I'll run through the run through the the figures on the screen real quickly it would be great. Thank okay. you. Okay, we'll do that. Thanks. And Rob just modeled what I was going to suggest, which is please pipe up if you do want to get in because I won't always be able to look at the screen. All right, so here's the um, stormwater plan, right? And the modified footprint of the new structure, right? So it's gonna be 20 feet by 16 feet now. They've reduced it, as Jay said, because of the not needing the bathroom in it anymore. And it's just one porch in front, right, Jay? Not two porches like it was originally. Um, and so there'll be gutters in various locations. Um, and uh, does the, the front leader go down to drainage that goes underneath? Yes. Okay. Um, and then that will go back here to daylight towards the back of the property. Uh, and then, hold on, I gotta change my share screen uh, to a different document, sorry. And then there's 
this other figure show that front porch foundation and how they've got the drains down so you've got the different leaders right from the gutters that go all the way down and connect to footing drains that go out and then drain towards the back so where that goes out at the back is where kurt has asked to have a dry well put to control that water and make sure it gets down even further into the ground Is that good, Rob? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that, the, you know, it would be nice just to roughly sketch on the kind of like rough site, overall site plan there of like just some arrows of like direction that things are going for final. But um, I, I think yeah. that we can address that in our condition and it's no big deal. Great. Great. Michael, are you all good? Do you need me to keep up anything or? stop uh no i don't need any uh, yeah i don't need any of the visuals okay. i'm just curious if the applicant doesn't mind taking you know two or three minutes and just sort of explain and i know it's all written out but just explain how they envision like the daily workflow traffic customers just a quick overview of that would be helpful yeah absolutely so um you know essentially the first person might come at nine o'clock so someone would drive into my driveway at nine o'clock there's been some questions about parking. Um, I have, there's a cutout in the driveway in front of the garage. So people will be instructed to pull in and turn around so they're facing forward towards Terrace Street. Mm -hmm. And then they can park parallel along the north side of the driveway. And there's room for three cars to park parallel along that north side of the driveway. Um, and it's, you know, there's plenty of room in the driveway to drive past those cars. So that space in front of the garage will be left open. So people will come in. So a car would come in, say nine o'clock, come in, turn around, park. The person would leave their car, walk through my gate and to the accessory building for the appointment, come in through the front door, um, and then we'd be together for the appointment. I wouldn't imagine that any um, sound would be heard outside the building because it's quiet talking and um, hands-on work. So approximately 45 minutes later, that person would walk out my gate, get in their car, go, and depending on if someone's if people are on time there wouldn't be overlap but of course sometimes someone's a little early or someone's a little late so the next car would drive in do the same thing turn around park parallel and then the next person would walk back um, about 45 minutes after the first the way i usually run my day there's four people that would come um, so let's say that was between about nine and one and then there's a break in the middle of the day and then maybe between two and six, there would be four more people. Mm -hmm. So that's usually how a day goes. Um, is that what you're looking for, Michael? Yeah, that, that's good. So, I mean, and, and it's, uh, is this appointment only? It's appointment only. So okay. it's all predictable. Nobody, nobody just shows up. Right. So yeah. people aren't queued up waiting. Yeah, that's, that's great. Thank you. No. Yeah. Thanks for that question, Michael. Um, other questions from board members? Okay. Um, well, good. Um, we've covered a lot of the things that were kind of outstanding in the staff report. Um, what I want to do, there, there is one kind of, it's sort of a threshold question about the use itself. So what I'd like to do is turn to the staff report um, because we are looking at um, a use that Meredith has advised us is uh, likely a home industry. And I'd like the board to have a discussion to confirm that that, that, that is the, the use. So <clears throat> the idea between home business, home, what are the three? Home office, business and industry. Home office, businesses and industry is that those are the types of things that can be compatible on land if you have it. Um, and, but each has a different sort of intensity. And so there's a different type of um, look that we would take at it in different um, ways we could choose to mitigate any impact if necessary. So um, Meredith has advised, um, well, first of all, there aren't definitions of these in our zoning definitions section, but there are descriptions about what sorts of things happen at each, each scale. So the, the reason I believe that a home industry has been selected has to do with the, the, the amount of coming and going, that um, there are more than 10 trips, uh, vehicle trips per day, because a trip in is one and a trip out is two. So each time a person comes and goes, it's, it's two things, not one. Um, 
So, yeah, so is there anything else you want to say about home industry? This, um, what that means is that the, um, the business is conducted on site by residents of the dwelling, which we've heard you testify you are. Mm -hmm. um, uh, will there be any non-resident employees? No. no. Okay. And the way you've described the business makes it pretty clear there won't be exterior storage of goods and materials. No. Concrete blocks and that, no. Um, commercial vehicles are not no. associated with the business. Um, and there are no on-site sales. The services are the goods on premises, the, the services provided on pre premises. Um, will there be any sign? I wasn't planning on the door of the accessory building itself. I'd like to have a sign so people know they're in the right place, but I don't plan to have a sign at the street. Okay. Yeah. Once you've figured out what you want, just reach out to, to Audra or myself. There are some size, some signs that you can put right next to your door that depending on the size, don't need any kind of permit at all. And then others, if you want to go a little bit bigger, it would just be an administrative permit. So just Great. figure out what you want and then email myself or Audra. We'll okay. help you get that. Thank you. So I will ask board members, as far as the, that classification as home industry, does that, um, does that, is that your assessment as well that it does qualify or is classified as a home industry? Any concerns or questions about that? Yeah, I mean, I think that that, that makes sense. Uh, what you went through, I, you know, I think that any, any expansion of, uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, from what's being proposed uh, would be outside of that. But um, I think that that's pretty, uh, pretty clear cut into like what's being proposed that it's confined to <laughs> what it is. So um, not worried about that. Thank you. Any other comments on the use classification from board members? All right. Um, what I'd like to do next then is just uh, ensure that we've covered the general use standards and then look a little at the um, character, the conditional use standards and confirm we have what we need there. So um, board members looking at the general standards, um, as we know, those have to do with use, which we've just discussed. Dimensional standards and accessory structures, setbacks and coverage are met. The other areas are demolition, riparian areas, wetlands and vernal pools, steep slopes, none of which um, are really applicable in this case. But I always like to pause and ask if there are any questions from board members. All right, hearing none. Um, we'll go on to erosion control and stormwater, um, which we've discussed a little bit. Um, I don't have any further questions about those. Do board members want any additional detail to help them make a determination? Okay. Um, section 3010 and 3011 are access and circulation and parking and loading respect, respectively, um, which we've just discussed. Further questions there? Um, just one clarification on that. So that what, maybe it's in here, but just for speed um, sure. on the street or will people be pulling into the driveway? Do you want me to answer? In, in the sure. driveway, no one would park on the street. Okay. Yep. It's quite a long driveway. It's good clarification. Thank you. All right. Um, what we'll do next then is move on to the conditional use standards. So the first standards are in section 3302, the capacity of community facilities and utilities. And this is typically to make sure that a use is not very burdensome on the sewer system or the water or the school or the stoplights. Um, and we've heard that this is a very low intensity use. Um, and those things seem to be met. Um, the standard we have to meet is that there's not a disproportionate or unreasonable burden. And I, I think we can agree that there is not. Um, similarly, 3303 is traffic. And we have to find that the comings and goings will not create an undue adverse impact that's substantially greater than what's currently in the neighborhood. So um, I want to see if board members have any comments or questions about that. Does it thumbs up? Okay, I'm kind of blind here. Um, and then the last set of standards, 
um, has to do with, and I realize I'm going a little faster than usual, and I want to note uh, Karen is here as well. Karen, you, you will be welcome to chime in before it's all over, <laughs> and we can revisit any of these that you might have a question about. Um, character of the neighborhood has to do with compatibility of architecture, of scale of buildings, of how much green space versus not, how much level of activity um, is there. Um, I think the one thing we wanted to ask you about was, um, is, there a, is there much vegetation on the site that will be removed in order to construct this? And is there any landscaping plans? Mm -hmm. So other than grass, we're not gonna remove anything, no trees, nothing like that. And, um, uh, you know, I would like to do some planting around the building, but I don't have a, a set plan yet. So, okay. so the okay. answer is yes, we do some planting around to make it nice. And I don't know exactly what that'll look like okay. yet. Okay. Yeah. Um, but right now it's set, there's two um, mature white pines to the one side of that building and a mature maple tree in front of it. So it's, you know, there's quite a lot of, and then trees in the back too. So there's a lot of screening. And there's some discussion. Um, so there may be some screening between between properties, perhaps with a fence that is under consideration. Yeah, my neighbors, the Lendways on the south side would like to have a privacy fence. And I, I'd like that to be part of the plan. So that would go from, I actually already have part of my backyard is fenced from the corner of that existing fence mm -hmm. to approximately at the end of my garage. They want that part um, so that they can garden and not have people see them garden. <laughs> okay. Well, good. I'm glad you're able to have that discussion yeah. ahead of time. Thank you for doing that. Of course. Um, and they also, they said six feet is fine. So Meredith had had questions about permitting, but yeah. Great, great. Think it ahead, appreciate that. Um, all right. Um, board members, as, as far as the character of the area is concerned, are there any um, further, further questions or concerns? Okay. There's, there's usually more talking going on, just so you know. <laughs> this is an unusually quiet BRB hearing, which is good, which, I think. Which doesn't mean anything is wrong, and it doesn't mean anything is right. It's just where we are. Um, great. So, so our standard that we need to, um, as a board, determine has been met is that this is based on the uses, the comings and goings, the traffic, the hours of operation, that this is compatible and consistent with the neighborhood as a whole. So. I'm gathering from my fellow board members that, that we are comfortable with that. And also, if you look at the white cameras. I know, but so I know it's hard. It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Whatever you look I guess uh, I just saw the, I don't know, the, if, if, if possible, in addition to the arrows, maybe sketch a couple of the, the major trees and not features on the site plan might be uh, good for the record to tie things together, just to document what we have discussed. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that, that can definitely be a condition to have the final site plan show the fence and the major trees, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That is that is a good idea for the record. Even though a site plan is not required for this use, it does illustrate how the different standards within the conditional use review are met. Great. And when you say direction, you mean the direction of the drainage? Yeah. Which way the yeah. water is going to flow? But, yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, so I will ask if, if anyone else wants to make a comment at this point, Karen, if you would like to, um, to weigh in or ask any clarifying questions or express any concerns, you'd be welcome to do that. Okay. Um, thank you. And um, my husband, Jim is with me and we actually live across the street from the property. Our property, uh, one end of our property is directly across from Jay's. They are incredibly good neighbors very conscientious. They made certain to reach out to every one of us directly. Um, I don't think you have anything to worry about with what she's doing. I also, in my note in, made it clear that I'm actually a client of Jay's, so I can speak to how she runs her practice in her current setting, and everything you've heard is exactly the same. It's a very quiet situation, um, very low key, and it's rarely the case that I cross paths with anybody else in the office these days. So, it, you know, it's not a problem from our perspective. Um, we have no concerns about the level of traffic that will be added. 
We also know her property pretty well because actually before she bought it, we looked at it before we bought the house we're in now. <laughs> so it's, um, it's got a big backyard. It's got lots of uh, space and, and access and the trees and the descriptions that she's giving you are really accurate. Um, and I, I don't expect that there'll be any concerns um, other than what she talked about for, for the Lenways and uh, everyone around here is pretty, pretty comfortable with each other and, and pretty upfront with each other about what's going on. So we, we totally support her, her effort. Great. And, and should they ever sell it, our, our perspective was in addition, this is a neighborhood that um, particularly when it gets to Deerfield and Dairy Lane, you're starting to see um, some accessory dwelling unit concepts available for people in the neighborhood because it, there's uh, a lack of that around. And I think that from my perspective fits into the city's uh, desire to have that available. Uh, obviously it would have to be adjusted if that ever happened. Um, but that was another thought for me in the future if they ever sell the property, that that would be something obviously have to come back to the, to the board, but um, those kinds of uses are, are perfect for this neighborhood, so. We're glad, I'm glad to know the structure is compatible and the uses could be flexible. Yeah. One thing at a time, I guess, but, yeah. but good. Thank you, Karen. And um, when there are two people joined on Zoom, I always invite the other people, the other person to speak as well. If Jim would like to speak at all. I'm, I'm good, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. You're welcome. All right, I don't think there's anyone else here to be heard on this. So, um, so board members, we have talked about, um, some details to be added to the to the plan showing direction of stormwater flow as well as major landscaping or major existing landscaping features. We've confirmed that the home industry use is appropriate um, and that the conditional use standards have been met, I believe. So um, what I would like to do is entertain a motion from the board um, regarding this application, is, is there a motion? I would make a motion here to grant conditional use approval for a chiropractic office as home industry within a new 580 square foot accessory structure and the construction of that structure at 83 Terrace Street as proposed in application Z 2021-0085 and supporting uh, and supplemental materials subject to the following conditions of approval. Prior to permit issuance, applicant shall submit to the zoning administrator final plans, including erosion control details, including silt fence locations, stormwater details, both as approved by the Department of Public Works. And um, on the site plan sketch, just some flow arrows, maybe the proposed fence uh, and the um, you know, major uh, you know, landscaping features such as trees would uh, um, do better document uh, things. So um, that's what we have. Thank you, Rob. We have a motion from Rob. Is there a second? A second. That was a second from Joe. Is there any discussion? I would like to offer a friendly amendment that testimony um, at the beginning, it's gonna be a smaller, instead of 20 by 20, it's gonna be 16 by 20. Um, so just for the square footage, I think that's 320. Gladly um, accepted. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. And I'll make, I'll double check the numbers and just make sure that whatever we approve at the end of the decision is the right number. Okay. Thank you. Great. Okay, any further discussion? All right, motion by, um, by Rob and a second by Joe. And um, I, since there's no further discussion, I will call the roll. All those in favor, Michael? Yes. Rob? Yes. Joe? Yes. And I vote yes as well. So we have um, approved this proposal. And what happens next is that there will be a written decision issued. And after that point, there is a 45 day window. Nope, no, nope, no. Nope. So there's a 45 day window to issue the written decision. So between now, but we'll get it out much sooner than that. Um, and then there's a 30 day appeal period after that decision. Um, because one of the conditions is gonna be the final plans, you and I can, we can talk tomorrow and talk about how to do that. I'll be in the office. If, I, I don't know what your, what your schedule is like the next two days. I'll be in the next two days. Mm -hmm. If you have any windows in there to come in and we can talk about like how to make that look. Um, 
because I can't issue the permit until I get those final plans. Mm -hmm. um, but and it'd be great if we can issue the permit and the decision all at the same yeah. time. That'd can be better I draw for you. it and send it to you? I yeah, we'll work it out. I think I think that with Kurt's approval of what we got before, we'll be able to just incorporate that into a site plan where you can draw it on with different colors and things. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I would just note that the colored pencils on top of what you provided would be uh, really, really, really nice and uh, <laughs> totally sufficient. Perfect. Thank you, Rob. That was my thought as well. Colored pencils or highlighters, they both work great. Yeah. <laughs> it's all, all about communication. It works. It works. Great. Um, thank you so thank much you. For, for coming and for participating and best of luck. Thanks. Thanks. You're welcome. Can I ask one quick question? The 30 days, is that from today or from the written? From the written decision. Okay. The 30 day appeal period is from the written decision. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. Good question. You're welcome. You. Have a good night. Take care. Good night. All right. So the next item on the agenda is other business. Um, and the other business is that our next meeting is Tuesday, September 7th, 2021. Instead of a Monday, it's on a Tuesday due to the Labor Day holiday. Is there any other business? I don't think so. Okay, I, I would like to remind folks um, that um, we're always looking for members for the, not always, we are now currently looking for members of the DRB. So please spread the word um, and get in touch with myself or Meredith if you know of anyone who might like to be a part of it. And with that, I will take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion by Rob, is there a second? Second. Second from Joe. I'll call the roll. All those in favor? Michael? Yes. Rob? Yes. Joe? Yes. And I vote yes as well. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Have a good week.